So last Vlogtober, I did a series of family-friendly Halloween film recommendations. Halloween style, or well, films with Halloween elements, that the whole family can watch together without anyone worrying about the children getting too scared. So basically something you can all sit together and watch. And especially now with COVID-19 restrictions and all, sitting in watching Halloween films will probably be as much as we'll get to do this, this Halloween season, as there'll be no big events or anything. So anyway, here are a new set of, re of film recommendations I've come to you with, and I hope you will all check out, as well as the other ones I've done. So anyway, no beating, so anyway, I won't start, I won't go bang on and on with an introduction, so let's get to it. So my first recommendation is, the first one is Ghostbusters 2. Now, in all honesty, I thought the second one was way better than the first one. I thought the first one was bad. And I just, like I said, I thought it was way better. So here in the second film, um, it's basically, I think it's, a couple of years after the first one, um, the Ghostbusters have suffered a bit of a, a PR damp PR issue because um, when they saved the city the last time, there was a lot of damage. So um, their in their reputation image is damaged, and they've also got the mayor's new assistant who's constantly trying to insult them, like drag them down, like destroy their credibility is what I meant to say. So this film is all about rebuilding that public image, and the threat in this film is um, sorry, sorry, brain freeze. Um, is a painting. Oh no, not just a pretty painting, it's a very spooky looking painting. It's of a, a something hundredth century Moldavian tyrant named Vigo. Vigo, the scourge of Carpathia, the sorrow of Moldavia, commands you. Sorry, sorry, I won't do quotes because they will be here all day. But no, it's all about, so he's trying to get out of the painting to come through. He needs to possess a body to become fit, to enter the real world and take over and basically like he did years ago when he was alive, like take over the whole world. So it's all about the Ghostbusters coming together to defeat him. Like it's a creepy looking painting and all, but it, it's a fantastic film and the Ghostbusters are great. And Bill Murray, as usual, is really funny. He's like, there's one scene where he's taking photos of creepy and he's like, hey, come on, smile, come on, smile. Do you like the girls? It's really funny. So that's one recommendation. And my next recommendation is based off the Roald Dahl book, and it is The Witches, or The Witches, starring Angelica Houston. So basically, in this film, this young boy is told by his grandmother that witches are real, but they don't have black cloud cloaks or hats or broomsticks. They are real, they've got, they're bald, they've got long claws, they've got no toes. So they're real, but they just use disguises to hide in plain sight, like wigs. And they go to what they think is a relaxing break by the seaside, but they've stumbled into what is actually a hotbed of witches. It is the annual meeting of the witches of England, chaired by none other than her absolute, her absolute wonderfulness and majesticness, Angelica Houston, the Grand High Witch herself. And she has created a potion that will turn children into mice. So it's up to the young boy and his grandmother to stop them. Oh, by the way, he gets turned into a mice too, so it's... Um, Gonna be a bit of a challenge for him, but it's a fantastic film. And Angelica Houston is phenomenal. Can we please talk about how there is no limit to this woman's talents? She's been Morticia Adams, and now she well, she did Morticia Adams after this film, but she's done Morticia Adams and she's done this. Like, I mean, the woman is absolutely phenomenally talented. Okay, and uh, the next one is, and it's a 90s classic, it is Halloween Time, starring Debbie Reynolds. So, this young girl and her siblings find out their grandmother is a real witch, and they stumble into a play, and they follow her to her hometown, which is Halloween Time. And they find out it is about to be taken over and terrorised by, um, I can't remember what the villain's called, I think it's the Faceless Demon or something, is gonna t he's freezing everyone and is going to take over Halloween Time and make everyone his slaves. So it is up to the kids to come, especially the teenage daughter, to rise up and stop them. And it's such a good, like Halloween time, it's so clever. You've got everyone, I think if I remember rightly, the wolf man runs a barber shop or something, or no, one of the kids has to give the wolf man a haircut or something. I can't remember actually, but it's, I actually have to rewatch this film because I just forgot how much I loved it as a kid. Like it is such a good film. I'm actually looking really looking forward to rewatching it. It's so good. And Debbie Reynolds is a great character. Like she really helps inspire the young protagonist to, um, to rise up to find her strength and that is um, that's what makes it such a great you know it's all about that sorry i'm chilling off here but it's a great film and it, as i said debbie reynolds character really inspires the protagonist to rise up and be the hero and that's one of the best things about it. it's all about that so um so i suggest you watch it sorry guys i'm trailing off here i don't know why and um, the next film is um sorry where is it is scooby dooby doo 
Now, I know the critics trash this film, but I think it's, be it's become a bit of a cult classic. I love it. So, the Mystery and Gang sort of have a bit of a t b bust up after their, um, solving a mystery. And they all come to Spooky End to solve another mystery. And it helps them build bridges, get back together, and sort of each sort of find their inner strength. The sort of, I don't know, <laughs> sorry. So basically, like, I mean, Daphne's always been labelled as the one who gets kidnapped, so, but she's able to use this chance to, um, to become more confident and use her karate skills, become more stronger, a stronger part of the gang. And they find out the monsters are real creatures, demon creatures, who are actually going to take over the world for a thousand years, and they have to all team up and stop them. Now, I'm not going to tell you who the bad guy is, but it's actually a pretty ingenious twist. It's, a, it's an animated character we all hate. I used to love him as a kid, but now I just think he's really annoying. But I won't tell you, I won't tell you. Now, the film is Scooby-Doo, but Sarah Michelle Gellar, I think, is... There is no end to this girl's talents. She was Buffy, and now she's Daphne. She is so good as Daphne. She's so strong and empowered, and... She's got a real attitude where Velma winds her up about being kidnapped all the time. She sort of takes off Velma's glass, like, oh, who's helping us now? Like, it is so good. I love Sarah Michelle Gellar. She is, like... Like, I think she's, like, an icon. Okay, and the next film is... Scooby-Doo again, it's Scooby-Doo 2 Monsters Unleashed. Now, in this film, um, there it is. so um, the gang are at a museum opening, and it's museum hosting all the costumes of all the cases they've solved, and it's a huge nostalgic throwback, because it's like all the monsters and ghosts they've, from the cartoons are like the, um, the Black Knight ghost, the 10,000 Volt ghost, the Minor 49er, Captain Cutler. It is such a huge nostalgic throwback, and that's why I love it so much. And this evil masked figure, won't tell you who it is, again, I won't spoil it, is taking all the costumes and is turning them into real-life monsters, and so it's up to the gang to stop him. And Scooby and Shaggy sort of feel a little bit... their goofiness is is sort of tarnishing the gang in a way, so they want to try and become more, um... What is it? More like the other members of the gang, be more stronger. But they soon find that the best thing to do is just be themselves, and that is such a powerful message, I think. I think this film is a wee bit ahead of its time in a way. You know, it talks about being yourself. Like, you don't have to be act like someone else to succeed. Just be yourself. And I love that message in the film. Even Fred finds it out. But no, it's it's so good. And again, Daphne, Sarah Michelle Gellar, is the highlight. There's this brilliant scene where she fights the Black Knight Ghost. I love it. It is just so badass. She They fight in the old spooky mansion. And it's like so brilliant and she kicks his ass well actually no Velma actually kicks his ass because she says his weakest point is right here and kicks him right up um I don't want to say it out loud but kicks him in a very a very weak area I'll say it. you'll get you'll see it when you see it you'll know but it's really funny and my final recommendation is 2003's it is the haunted man sorry the haunted mansion now, I went, I went on the ride years ago as a kid in Disneyland Paris. I loved it. It was so spooky. Now, we're talking about the ride. We're talking about the film. But basically, this family stop over, a real estate couple stop over where they think it's an innocent sale and end up getting trapped in this haunted house by this dark um, curse. And basically, the kids and the dad, Eddie Murphy, has to start realising he has to stop being so workaholic and put his family first if they're ever going to get out of here before his wife becomes a ghost bride to the guy who owns the house. But the, I can't remember what you call the name of the actor, but the guy who plays the butler is so creepy and malevolent. Now, not creepy and malevolent in a scary way. So, sorry guys, brain freeze again. Um, sorry. But no, it's all about, so he has to put his, he has to sort of, he becomes a better character by the end. He learns to put work aside and be a better father, be a better husband and put his family first. And, um, like, I think the Haunted Mansion itself, the visuals in this film are absolutely fantastic. Like, it's just so good. So you can see, uh, um, see the visual, like, I mean, and there's some fight scenes with creepy skeletons all, but don't worry, nothing that'll scare the kids. But it's so good. Sorry. So, um, basically, guys, that wraps up my, um, next set of, my current set of recommendations for family-friendly Halloween films. I hope you'll watch them and enjoy them as much as I do. So, anyway, guys, uh, thanks for checking out this video, and stay tuned for more Halloween vlog content. Bye!